an economy that follows the other sort of uh, the dimension. So what we see, you, you are interested on in the type of capital you have, uh, have the most of the And interested in politics follow neatly the, the uh, horizontal one, the volume dimension. Here are some, some other areas that we are interested Voting, political self evaluation, and self attitude. Up to the left in the domain where the volume is high and the economy dominates, we find the conservative, the electorate of the home uh, <coughs> And lower in the volume, but still on the domain where the economy dominates, that's where we find that those who support the Progress Party, which is a, a right wing a populist party. So, the domain of uh, where the economy dominates, then people are, are uh, electing right wing parties. On the other hand, on this, down here, where in this area here, where culture dominates the capital composition, then we find the liberals, the socialist left party, uh, uh, and the Christian. So then it was a very close to very, very average. <coughs> and uh, the, the red arrow uh, reflects this, this uh, uh, strong difference in, in uh, political orientation. It follows the capital composition dimension. So that people who are right-wing inclined, they are mostly a position that is located in the area, domain, where the economic capital is dominant. While people who are, uh, are, are left leaning, they are at usual position, which are uh, they're, they're where the uh, cultural capital is dominant. dominant so this, 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 this pattern, you find, if I do it in, in Norway, if I do it in National Center, I would find the same general pattern. So this is, I would argue that this model is obvious, is uh, contribution to the discussion and analysis across across difference. And I would say that the model is is, is, is better has better explanatory uh, power than than competing or saying go for it or something else. Now <coughs> I uh, I now can go on using this uh, this uh, construction as a frame of analysis. In this one, I have uh, given a, trying to give a picture of how, how the, the respondent, how the citizens are, are appropriating the city. What, what, what are they interested in? What do they do? And uh, with, with thick letters, I've written uh, position of the various cultural institutions. And the uh, points represented is the middle of the those who, who take uh, an active uh, uh, active use of the of the institution. And you can see that it is, those points are, except one, are positioned in the area where uh, where the cultural capital is dominating. I have a little tri triangle. That is uh, what 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 is to do when you're young. Down here we have uh, uh, <coughs> going out uh, for a beer twice a month or more. That is in the cultural area. Going out for a dance once a month or more. That is done by, by those people uh, in the uh, lower part of, of, of the graph, uh, <coughs> with low volume. And uh, going out dining, that is very expensive in Norway. And that is mainly done by people who have more money than they have consciousness. And uh, I also asked about the favorite. <laughs> Did I say wrong? Yes. <laughs> it was correct. Okay, so you just did. Yeah. Okay. I asked about uh, favorite restaurants or pub. And here are a couple. Up here we have uh, John's Modern Williams. Uh, That's a restaurant, a very good one, which in fact is called Michelin. Uh, stores sometimes. And down here we have Shelly student in the cultural area, lower on the volume dimension. And down here. Let's have a look how it looks uh, in those places. 
that's John's model of ethos. So you'll see heavy, heavy colours, and they're even got, uh, it may be the photograph, but, but uh, I think the, the forks and, and, and uh, knives are good in them, but I, I don't think that is correct. But it, it gives the underlying the, the, the style, the heavy style, which is compatible with, with the style, the lifestyle of those who frequent. Go to the, the cultural thing, Craig is too, a pub. Here's my friend playing jazz. Uh, my worst competitor was the bass player. He, he got the, the good work, the good jobs. I did the, 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 the worst one. But you can see it's a completely another style. This simple, the, the, the black and white photography and underline this, which of course it does. And long, long hair. So in this, the style of the place matches the style of of the, the person who report. And here I, 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 uh, so, uh, I have some, some minutes left and uh, I, so I had to, to omit what one analysis. And that is, I, we asked about what, what area of residence uh, you could you think of in had you a uh, uh, first choice and which could you not think of. And the uh, days were analyzed, uh, analyzed by the correspondence analysis to work together with a lot of other, other, other uh, lifestyles there. And what we found out was that those people who said that they could live in a certain residential area, they were similar, they had same, similar lifestyles and similar, similar, similar position as those who actually were living. So this is the whole theory of the mission, which, is, which is quite detect detectable when well, looking at the data. <coughs> right. So what I'm going now to, to do are these processes that you could see and discover by analyzing survey, are they actually possible to detect and identify in, in the uh, geography of of the city. And this is what the, the, the last part of my contribution did. And for that, I, I have uh, get hold of a, a, a survey made by the municipalities. And uh, uh, it was designed to, to uh, uh, <coughs> investigate the living condition in various areas. And in so doing, they slice up the map in 68 different geographical areas. And each of these 68 areas were described by the help of different types of statistics. Different types of statistics. And from that data base, I have selected eight variables that had had to do with the, the, the uh, <coughs> forms of capital that so, quick, what, what, what are they? Median income in the area. Index of uh, home loan per year, that is the difference between those 10% of the richest and those 10% of the poorest. I have percentage of poor people, I have percentage of low education people, I have poor, poor percentage of university education, and large living and, and, and uh, small class. And I've made a principal component analysis of that. And uh, this uh, correlation this circuit shows that that uh, uh, the, uh, <coughs> the variable median income goes to the rather well the big big size flat. As opposed to those areas of small size that are and the the uh, poor people. And the second dimension then goes together. The proportion of high education goes together with the, the great homogeneity. No, the uh, uh, heterogeneity. The big difference between rich and and uh, So this pattern, I <coughs> think, how could that be compared to the model proposed by the And my suggestion then is to. Yeah, we can make, we can make a, a map of the same thing. Well, which means that the areas that are 
the errors are pointing to are have a lot of, of, uh, of that, uh, that variable. So here are the, the areas where the big plants are. Here are the areas where the medium medium is high. To be able to analyze this, so instead of uh, uh, investigating the relationship to, to more than 68 different entities, I've made a cluster analysis. Put together groups that are equal with regard to these eight Eight, eight uh, levels, and my suggestion is that if I put in, put in, uh, uh, try to fit model, uh, model uh, with this result, it should look something like that. I put in the volume of axle like that, the low, low down here, high up here, and I think put the, uh, the capital composition dimension uh, contrary to. So a quick look now. What do we have? Five minutes here. I think it's three minutes. I start down here. Then, according to the model, there should be no volume uh, in the fraction, and uh, they have more of economy than than culture. And here are the the uh, indicators: low income, <laughs> low, uh, low education. Median income is low, uh, homogeneous in the uh, economy, and few with high education. Now they here. That now I moved up here. That is still on the economic domain, and but now higher on volume. And what happens? Big flats, plus medium, the higher income than, uh, than uh, average, and and uh, <coughs> homogeneous. <coughs> Higher education is still, still underrepresented in the area, and there are no poor at the okay. And what we we'll go to the next. Now, compare these two. They are, in fact, situated in the same area. So, what, and that is the periphery, and which means that the periphery is populated with people with the, where, whose capital and position is dominated by, by economy, they are positioned in the outskirts of the city. To the center, uh, <coughs> that should be the dominant class position, and they have really taken the, the best part of the city. It is the waste, it's the golden waste, going from, from the, the historical border uh, area over to where this is the high priced area, and we can see that high media uh, income, big size that, and, and a great difference between the four Over on the other side, <coughs> there we should find the, the cultural people. And what do we find? It is the areas where the, the difference between the rich and poor are, are great, and the poor are, are more uh, represented above average, small size. And high education. So, so, so far we uh, we conform with the with the model. And the last one, which is, uh, is uh, I would, should have said that those uh, the, these are many areas where the most developed world is I think uh, I, I stretched stretch my time. So there is a small small written conclusion. I, I think you have to use the magnifying glass. Thank you very much to both speakers. And now we can open for discussion. There are clearly some nice parallels between the papers, not just with the radical framework, but with Talia. Thinking about the ghetto with work similar to the one that Donald thinks about one of the wealthiest cities in the world. I think he thinks that the same world is Well, I, I shortened my, my uh, <laughs> in order for you to come to questions. Question for Donald. I am 
it's a very old question. You mentioned being very young to the role of the media. Would you see my transcribing the ghetto? I mean, you were pretty frequent, but I've been watching the wine. And I wasn't sure what you meant next to the wine. No, no, no. So, but you, so how do you see the role of the media? Would you see my transcribing the ghetto? Are we taking a couple? tell middle class people something about places that people want to go to. I have a feeling that I'm not giving people any type of feeling. That there is a clear relationship between imagery and the image that we can. And but what I meant to say when I said it kind of meant to that is that um, this idea of like I leave Baltimore when I have to choose the channel and the, and the complete sort of ignorance that's you don't know that there are various radio channels. And I, you would think that through internet they would have changed. And I'm sort of starting a little piece of additional research to do not really did before, it's a couple of years ago, uh, partly because I can't leave again and go back. So, and, and, and you see that there's a lot of Facebook people on Facebook that I know from the times in the field. Um, but from what I, the preliminary sort of things that I find is that, is that it's not a wide internet use. It's not like a server using Google trying to explore the world. It's actually creating, you know, it's a Facebook community. It's, and then there's a website of, it's a very scary and, and sad one for, this is a memorial site. This is for all the guys that got shot. And so it's pretty good there. And so it's creating additional, Parts of networks, and again, I think this is confirmed by research done by people like Gary Norman, who basically find that the internet age is not using the people creating new ties more than they had before, but it's actually not a way of maintaining their social ties that they already have, even a lot of social ties. And, and I would have thought, given the fact that there's so many computers now in, in, in the area, people have access to the internet, that that would create, you know, I think that's the democratizing knowledge or something like that. But I think just like you have 69 channels but you're still watching Judge Judy or nothing else, I think the internet is a little bit the same. So there is a digital divide, but it's not about getting access to go online. It's what you do when you're online. Actually, I'm going to take three questions now and then we'll see how it's going to be. Yeah, I'd say it's a kind of those in Italian. I'm aware that there's sort of been more recently interested in, in um, audio's approach to space and place. But I wonder whether the idea of another category, another concept, which equals spatial capital, is really necessary. Okay, uh, yes, um, maybe it's a question for the concept of case. Um, I, I just want to think about the uh, accounts work in this uh, area because he, he divides between uh, disadvantaged uh, areas and uh, ghettos and I think he also has this outside perspective not inside perspective but the outside perspective is uh, creating inside processes which uh, uh, where he thinks that, that there will be an internal organization so, uh, you say differently about it here. Uh, thanks, I enjoy both those papers. I'll comment to today, actually. I just mean, wonder if you want to reflect on how, um, how your model of Sazango might be, might be widely shared in other cities. I mean, one of the thoughts about Sazango is because of the oil money, there'll be some really quite specific. Features to speak, think they would be attracted by business class and get some people involved in the oil industry, which might make it rather an unusual place compared to other cities. I have two more than Thank you. Question to Len. Um, you came to my mind when you presented the different classes. Um, did you try to frame um, the dynamics within the built urban area in your different clusters? Of your research, so to say that 
that you um, because it reminded me a little bit of the city of Hamburg, where you do have um, different two different areas in the city where you have certain dynamic in the building structure, the building structure that was closely connected with movements, with social movements. So, and each time when I see such a presentation that connects, which is very interesting, that connects um, those factors like economic and cultural capital with the built urban area, I always ask myself if you also try to correlate your study with a certain dynamic within the built urban area, especially in that city, which I don't think um, changed a lot in its in its built environment. So just if you have two words. Yes. <coughs> well, my question is for that. I was just wondering about the model for evaluating property capital um, based on education and how that took into consideration other kinds of cultural capital which may be useful perhaps for maintaining transnational networks and, uh, um, and other social networks. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have a pen on the mic. <laughs> I missed the question. So about the built environment uh, in Islam, that has been changed indeed very little. What was built in the, in the uh, before the war, between the war, after the war, is still there, and very little has been in. in uh, Change, <laughs> but there is one thing that, that I have to jump over, and that is, we in Stavanger has the waterfronts everywhere else, and that was built in in uh, uh, area close to the water, of course, and in areas where the old old uh, old uh, canyon is always running. So they were demolished, and instead rather than built. Block of flats, which are new, they, in the size it is small. And in that, that area, that very old people who didn't have any relation to the, 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 the locality. And that uh, uh, created some paradoxes when, when the, the uh, municipality presented its uh, survey of living condition. The worst place there was was. In fact, those uh, those uh, gentrified areas, or what we call the waterfront, and what happened then was there's a lot of debate in the town council uh, created by those newly arriving who said they didn't want to live in the, in the worst part of, of Stavanger, and and so they questioned the whole idea with, with the, because they didn't see any improvement, but they were just under the blind, uh, living in the old houses that were left when the factories were, were, were demolished and was, was erected. About the, the, uh, <coughs> the uh, use of uh, indicators of cultural capital, well, I would say that you can use many things as a cultural capital. I can use my mother's education and other types of investments in, in, in uh, books and all that. But the, 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 there is no, no strong uh, uh, argument for using precisely this, but they are important and, and they work, they function. But it is important to, when you're using this model, that you separate people with higher education, you separate them according to the uh, area of study. That is, <laughs> studying economy leads to another position than uh, studying social. But what was my problem? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, exceptionality. Yeah, it is, it is, it is certainly it is the most affluent city in Israel. And uh, uh, what uh, <coughs> uh, uh, there are increasing sort of economic uh, differences, certainly. But I would say that uh, that the, the class of of, the, of people who who so to say have the Economy as a basis, but that aspect is, is quite exactly where, where, which uh, transforming mode, transforming mode, there are more uh, overweight of people from the uh, right uh, 
conservatives and the, the uh, populistic. And so there is the, the, but that gap. Okay. Um, on relevant spatial capital, I don't think we need spatial capital per se. Maybe we better off with opportunity structures, but we do need to think of a concept that captures that some places are relevant for producing access to resources. So I'm struggling with that and we don't necessarily want to stick to special capital there. And, and on Macron, and yes, um, uh, Macron talks about territory, territory, territory institutionalization, but my problem with that is basically the, the who's done it question. That I can't tell from Macron's work, it's hard to find people who do these things with marginalization on the side of the ones that are the dominant. Um, so there's a lot of policies in this work, there's a lot of uh, discourses that those things need to be implemented. And that practice of implementation, of the practices, the actual practices of modernization, I think are, I think are underestimated in this analysis, but it doesn't give us the data, the evidence, and purpose stuff. And, and um, while the inter, inter, internal structures may be impacted, indeed, and that's what it argues, and that this identification, people not want to do anything for the community, no participation in the life. Those actual practices of, of um, process of exclusion and stigmatization do not take place in Germany, nor are they from the outside on the ghetto, but they take place elsewhere. And I think we need to leave the ghetto as researchers to see what the ghetto is really going to do. That's excellent, and we are going to conclude on that note. Thank you very much for being here with us. Thank you.